And for our final part of the review, um, we have some lines and inequalities. So if we want to find a line, we need to find the slope and then the equation of a line. So first we'll find the slope. The slope formula we call m for slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 over x1. It's like the change in the y's over the change in the x's. So we'll call our points x1, y1, x2, y2, and we'll plug those numbers in. So we're going to do 1 minus negative 2. So minus from the subtraction and then the other minus from the negative 2. And then we'll do 4 minus negative 2. Same idea, 1 from the minus sign, 1 from the negative 2. So we get 1 plus 2 over 4 plus 2. Um, simplify that. Pause if you want to work on it on your own. I'm going to get 3 over 6, which simplifies to 1 half. 1 half because divide by 3, divide by 3. So our slope is 1 half. And then a formula we're going to see a lot throughout the semester is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And this is called the equation of a line in point slope form. And then we can just simplify it to get it in the other form. And we can plug in either of the two points, your choice. I'll probably plug in the second point just because then I don't have to worry about double negatives. Um, if you plug in the first point, you'll get the same answer. It'll just look a little different for a moment. So it'll be y minus 1, and then 1 half for the slope, x minus 4. The main thing is, is you need to pick the x and the y from the same point. You can't mix and match. So if you did negative 2, they would both be negative 2. And we're almost done. We'll just simplify this a bit. So y minus 1, we get 1 half x, and then we get minus 2. And then we'll just move the 1 to the other side, plus 1, plus 1. And so we get 1 half x minus 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is minus 1. And that is slope intercept. This is called the intercept, which I will graph in the next example. So that'll remind you what an intercept is. So in example 7, we're going to rewrite it in this form, and then we're going to graph to review graphing. So if I want to rewrite it in, y inter in slope intercept form, it means solve for y. So we're going to say 3y plus x equals 6. Uh, I'm going to move x to the other side because I want to solve for y. 3y equals negative x plus 6. And then when we divide, we divide everything by 3. A common mistake is maybe to only divide the 6 by 3. Everything gets divided by 3. And so negative x over 3 really means negative 1 third x, just so it looks like a slope. And then 6 over 3 is 2. And then we can use this to graph. So when we graph a line, the B is my intercept. So it's the point 0, 2. It means I go up 1, 2, and I graph that. If it were negative 2, it would be below the y-axis. But positive 2 is, that's why this is called slope-intercept form. The 2 represents my intercept. And then the slope tells me how to move. So since it's negative, we'll go down. The top tells us up or down. Negative tells us to go down one. And then the bottom tells us to go to the right. Um, we don't go to the left because that would be a double negative. So I usually do up or down for positive negative, and then I just always go to the right. So I don't have to worry about like a double negative move. So up or down. Up is positive, down is negative, and then to the right. So we go down one, and then we go over three. One, two, three. Down one, over three. One, two, three. Down one over three, one, two, three. And then if you connect them, it should make a nice line. And then we'll pretend that goes through the points, right? If I had a ruler, it would look a little nicer. There we go. And so there's my line. And it keeps going forever and ever. Hopefully this is coming back to us. Um, I can always give you resources for more. This is just a quick review, and all of this you could do in more depth as needed. Um, and there'll be workshops on each of these topics, so any topic you need more practice with, we should have a workshop on. All right, let's do the final one together. Um, this is like one of everything, and again, workshops could give you a whole hour on one of these topics that maybe there's like 
Maybe seven is really good, but eight is really hard. So we'll find a workshop that covers the eight topic and you can kind of skip the one that covers seven. So this is a good chance for us to figure out which parts we need to review more and which ones maybe we don't need to review more. Um, so inequalities, we're gonna do similar stuff. We're gonna get rid of those parentheses by distributing the negative five. So negative five X and then it becomes positive five plus three. And then this is greater than or equal three X minus four minus four X. And then if I have any like terms that are on the same side, I can combine them. So the five and the three go together and the three X and the four X go together. And then everything else is opposite side. So we'll leave it alone for now. So minus five X plus eight greater than or equal to negative one X three minus four minus four. And then just like an equation, let's get the X's on one side. Let's get the numbers on one side. So I'm going to add one X cause those cancel out. Add one X. For the most part, it's the same as an equation. There's just one exception in a second. So negative five plus one is negative four. And then let's move the eight because I put the X on the left. Let's put the numbers on the other side, minus eight, minus eight. And we get negative four X still greater than or equal to negative 12. And then this is the one step that's different. So when we divide, when we divide by a negative number, it flips the sign. So we've probably seen this before, maybe forgotten it's coming back. So we get X, we get positive three, and then it flips when we divide by a negative, only when we divide by a negative. If it were dividing by a positive, we wouldn't do this. So my solution is any number that is less than three, that is inequality notation. Um, so let me talk about what an interval notation is and let, let's do the graph. So the graph is just a number line Draw a bunch of numbers. Um, we're gonna go to three. We're gonna include three because of the or equal sign. That means three is also a solution. So we put a nice closed circle because three is a solution. If I plug in the number three, both sides are equal. And that symbol at the bottom means or equal. And then anything less than three will make this statement true. So we shade to the left for less than. And I like to do the graph before interval because then I can actually visually see the interval. So the interval, if it just keeps going forever and ever, means negative infinity up to three. And then this symbol here means include three rather than a parentheses. If we were not including three, it would look like this. But the or equal symbol is telling me to include the three, so we do a little bracket. So as you watch these videos, be sure to pause, give yourself some time to try it before I finish it. Um, if you need to see it again, watch it again. Hopefully that got us through the review.